I always get worried when I stand in front of a room of smart people because when you're talking about property with someone on the radio, you know that you know more than them. But when you're in a room full of practitioners, you quickly realize there's no way you know more than them. I don't know more than the front row. I don't know more than even two people added together. Uh, it's one of the problems with specialization. You start to, to know more and more about less and less until you get to a point where my wife has informed me that I know everything about nothing at all. So what I want to do is, uh, it's an experiment. And to do this, I have my fancy board. I'm going to call up Tina Marie from the Sunday Business Post who kindly offered to be the scribe. She's going to write things down for me. Tina, thanks for that. I, uh, I owe you one. <laughs> I love you very much. <laughs> and what I want to do is just show that any problem out there, anything that's not working, you can actually use a group of people, a swarm, uh, a host of different ways of, of solving it. So I'm just going to look at the room. You've got the people in the back. You've got three seated sections. So the first section, does anyone here have any firm ideas on what they think the biggest problem is in the construction industry today? Raise your hand. All right, well you can write down building costs. I'll let you have a turn. <laughs> Anyone here that rides a horse? Plays a guitar? Anyone who's in their 40s? <laughs> All right, come on up. <laughs> Grab a seat there. This is uh, Jonathan Kelly from CH Chaz. Chaz. What do you do? Uh, social housing. He does social housing. Grab a seat there. All right, I'm going to get a volunteer from here. Anyone amongst you know how to dance? Anyone amongst you have a watch on? <laughs> See, this is the tooth pull and extraction. And then you wonder why we can't have nice things. Somebody should do something. I'm calling upon you. All right, Joe Bishop, come on up. <laughs> That's the nice thing about having name tags too. I know there's a way to turn this on. All right, Joe, what do you do? Public affairs. All right, so we have social housing, public affairs, and I'm not going to ask this time. I'm just going to call the lady with the nice pink scarf. Come on up. She's going somewhere in five minutes. All right. Elsha Collier O'Brien. Alicia Collier O'Brien. Public affairs as well. Chambers, Ireland. My goodness. All right, so we've loads of vested interest. That's great. It means we're plenty of representation. Any planners, any architects, anyone who knows nothing about anything? You could be just like me if that's... Sorry, ma'am. Come on up. <laughs> All right, so now we have three people. And I'm just going to give them a chance to say what they think is the biggest problem in housing today. As a matter of fact, I'll get you too, because I, I recognize I'll have an architect in there. Come on up. That's all right. You're only volunteering this one. Come on up. So, the biggest problem in construction today, in your perspective? Red tape. Red tape. That's not something that you often hear from people in the social housing sector. Red tape. Red tape, what does that involve? Just um, things not getting done quick enough because of regulations and different things like that. Now, that almost sounds like a right-winger comment, but it's coming from social housing, which is, again, it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive. Joe, what do you reckon is the biggest issue? I'd probably agree with the height restrictions. Um, I think we need to grow up more so than... Okay, height restrictions. This is something I know a little bit about. Not enough to speak with any authority, but what I can say is that it's interesting that we talk about building a 21st century city while espousing an 18th century skyline. That to me was always amazing. Like These are the type of incompatible objectives that you're faced with when you're trying to form a city. And what's even more amazing is the fact that everything isn't broken. If you ever think about the complexity of the fact that all the water tends to run when you turn on the tap, that electricity is normally there when you plug something in. All of these systems all running, and most of them have no central person who's overseeing it all at the one time. 
it's just absolute chaos. So it's actually quite amazing that we're even where we are now, but height restrictions obviously would be an issue. What do you think is the biggest problem in construction? Uh, getting planning permission. Planning permission. Again, something I feel very near and dear about because I don't believe in third party property rights. That's my own thing, but I think if you own land, you should be able to do what you want. If someone doesn't like the view when you build something, well, they can purchase that view by paying you to not build it. But when you buy something, I never knew that you actually owned the rights to see over something else. I was always under the impression you own whatever's on the ground underneath you. So that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Planning permission, that will bring in all the vagaries with that. It brings in all the issues of other people having a choice about what you get to do. Now, Orla, what do you reckon is the biggest issue? I'm going to be speaking about this over on stage seven, so I'll give that a plug. Um, two problems, capacity and affordability. All right. So now we have it. From random people in the audience, except for Orla, who I, who I know from elsewhere, capacity, affordability. How are you going to afford a house? I spoke about this upstairs uh, with David from uh, Property Industry Ireland, Ireland. And I was just making the point that a person on average wage can't buy an average house in Dublin. Now, they can buy an average house in many other places. I think, uh, I think one of our next speakers will have some views on that. But if you're earning about 35000 which is about the average wage, and you want to buy a house, you simply can't do it no way on your own and with difficulty with two people. So we are now at a point where we've had four volunteers who have all given very interesting thoughts on it. But now I want to vote. And uh, in keeping in line with the tradition of border counties during elections, everyone has two votes. All right. So you can only vote for two things on here. So I'll get a show of hands. Who thinks build cost is the number one issue? One, two, three, four, five. Did I count that right? Five? Okay, we'll give them five. Uh, red tape and regulation. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Height restrictions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to vote for height restrictions, actually. I, I do agree. I think, I think that that's a massive problem. Huh? Okay, sorry, three. All right. Planning permission. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And capacity. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And lastly, affordability. So the clear winners are capacity and affordability, closely followed by planning. So actually, yeah, we'll throw that in finance and banking. I have to, as a, as a finance person, give that a plug too. <laughs> Anyone feel that finance and banking, if you want to do a third vote, you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, 11. What was that? <laughs> All right, 11. So still not, not a clear leader there. Now, this is the swarm, so we want to get people who know about the things that we're talking about. Does anybody here have any expertise in the area of affordability? Housing affordability, you do? All right. Does anyone... I'm going to skip capacity because that was yours too. Anyone here really know a lot about planning permission that regularly goes for planning permission, that sits through that process and... Yeah, yeah, I can't just keep calling on the same person. Anyone who's a developer? All right, you come on up too. So, because I don't know everything you need to know and because I have about four minutes left, now you can stand. <laughs> I want you to tell me, you've got two minutes, and then you can swap out with Orla for two minutes about your journey as a developer and planning. And Orla, I'll get you to do two minutes on affordability. And you still have to go to her talk later. OK, I'll be real quick. Yeah, my name's Keelan, and uh, I'm involved in property developments of infill sites and uh, yeah, residential schemes. Uh, the planning is a bit unwieldy, it's very unpredictable as we know, and if anyone's buying a site, fundamentally there's finance behind 
the buying of a site and it's a cost of money there's a there's a clock ticking every month but we don't we're obviously at the behest of planners and the decision making process i think the development plans are pretty good overall but the real pro real problem as i see as a small developer is um third party appeals by disgruntled neighbors or you know this whole nimbyism approach and essentially could get a, a perfectly valid uh, planning application granted planning but it could be objected to by someone who previously made an observation and that fundamentally delays it by at least another four months with the board plan order. And then again, they may overturn the decision that was granted in the first place. So it's, it's really, a, it's a huge, um, I would say, uh, a delay mechanism in the, in the, in the, in the delivery of housing. And that's, that's my key gripe. I've done development as well, but I won't go there. Um, I think the issue of affordability is we're missing the point. The cost of everything that you pay for is how you buy it. So the real issues for affordability are not in reducing standards. Not, they're, they're issues about land. They are issues about design and procurement processes. And if there are any efficiencies to be made, to be, efficiencies to be made there, we need to look very fundamentally about how things are being designed, how things are being procured, and how we be make best use of available resources. Yeah, I don't know a lot about planning, but I suppose I'm just aware that people are having issues when they apply for a planning permission that it takes a long period of time to get or else um, that they get held up on silly things. And it kind of comes into height restrictions and all of that as well. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a sector that we've really recently started working in the firm um, on housing and construction and, and we're working with a couple of firms who are... Um, they work in the UK and they're, they're just getting involved in the Irish market a little bit more and they're just completely flabbergasted at the height restrictions and at the restrictions in general that they have to build within. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just something that we're engaging a lot with um, Dublin City Council and, and other county councillors and um, there, there seems to be a complete, um, there seems to be a desire amongst all, the, well, a majority of developers and people on the street, unless I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken, that they're happy for height restrictions where where necessary it's not they're not trying to build Dublin city completely up but where they are suitable where they're necessary there's a certain demographic that would like that and um, why there just seems to be a blanket uh, prohibition on them and, and I know that the minister had mentioned that he, in July he's going to try and, and look at them again so um, it's something that we're very much looking forward to seeing what, what will come out of it but um, it just at the minute it just seems to me and, and to the developers that we work with that um, they're just they're holding back potential. Yeah, when I said red tape, it was just like an overview of nearly what everyone else was saying. Um, like, everything seems to take a long time, or you, when you think, well, it's not going to take too long to go from like a greenfield site to a build, it, it never seems to take a short time, it's always a long time. Thank you. So, I think what I've, I've quickly learned today is that whatever about not having the answers, I don't even know what the problems are. And, uh, and so these are some of the issues. Third parties, someone who's a developer has told us about that. But where is the conversation about whether third party property rights should even exist? One of the small things I do know is that Ireland is one of the only countries that has it. Most places, once the planners say yes, you can't just go in and say, oh, I'm appealing that, unless you can prove that they've actually broken the law. And I think that one of the, one of the things that's happening there is we have an inherent distrust of our own system. We have to start trusting it. If anything that the minister said is ever going to come true, it, it has to actually occur, and we have to believe in it. Uh, in the design and procurement, we have a lady who's at the top of her game there, lectures in it. She's telling us this. But when was the last time you heard a housing conversation anywhere that was just focused on design and procurement. Again, it, it wouldn't have been part of my talk. I would have just come and spoken about mortgages or finance or, or something else that, that would have no impact on your life. The delays, the heights, the long time delays, 
these are all again part of the thing that shows the the lack of I guess equilibrium between the requirement for something and the ability to supply it. A house is never going to be as complex as this little computer thing here. Most houses don't have technology and the whole house that rivals that. You can build that in about a day, a house takes about two years. So even though we've come so far in the world, there's still these things that constrain us and, and that that's actually the conversation we need to be having and they're the problems we need to focus on fixing because although you'll hear lots of smart people talking today, they're probably not talking about the way to solve the actual problems in a functional sense. We have the ideas of problems, but then how do you turn that into the operational way to actually get over that? And I think that's really the conversation as a nation that we have to have if we're ever going to resolve housing in general. Whatever about stopping a boom, it's about bust prevention too. And uh, I'd like to thank all of our involuntary volunteers and all of you for listening. This was an experimental talk, so uh, next time I'll come with a sharp suit and a good beard and give you a load of facts, but for now I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs>